Hey guys, today we are going to be looking at non-proportional relationships. We are going to look at what makes a relationship non-proportional and answer the question, what is a re linear relationship? So non-proportional and linear relationships, non-proportional relationships do not have that constant of y over x. Let's look at why. It's because these non-proportional or linear relationships can be written in the form y equals mx plus b. So we're going to be adding something in addition to multiplying. Which means that there is an additive relationship instead of a multiplicative relationship like with proportional relationships. So instead of y equals kx, we have this y equals mx plus b. So let's look at what is different about it. X and Y are still the independent and the dependent variables. And then we still have this number in front of X that we're gonna be multiplying by, which is still the rate of change, but we call it M instead of K because it's not a constant of proportionality. And then we have this added thing right here, which is B. It's called the constant because it's just a number or you will see in a graph that it is the Y intercept. So let's look at an example of this. Jessica buys movies online. She pays a $3 service fee plus $9 for each ticket. So if you notice, this time we have a fee. In the past when we've been dealing with proportional relationships, we would just have a rate, something like $9 for each ticket. Now we are going to have an additional thing on top of that rate. So the equation for the situation where there's a $3 fee and $9 for each ticket is why y equals 9x plus 3, where 9 is that rate of change and 3 is the constant or the y-intercept. So let's look at a table to represent this. So before she's even bought a ticket, the cost is $3. If you notice, I don't have that 0, 0 point. There is something going on when the independent value is 0. And then one ticket would cost $12 with that $3 fee plus $9 per ticket. 2, 21, and so on. So the ratio of y over x is not going to be constant. Like 3 divided by 0, I can't do that. 12 divided by 1 would be 12. 21 divided by 2 would not be 12. So y divided by x is not constant. Instead, the y values are changing by 9 as the x values change by 1. So if you notice, I am adding 3 plus 9 is 12. 0 plus 1 is 1, 12 plus 9 is 21, 1 plus 1 is 2, 21 plus 9 is 30, and then 2 plus 1 is 3, and then 30 plus 9 is 39, and 3 plus 4 is 1. So we are adding 9 as our x values are changing by 1. And then we already talked about this a little bit. The table does not contain 0, 0 because we had that point 0, 3 for the service fee. And that service fee is what makes it a non-proportional relationship. And then let's look at the graph. So the graph does not pass through the origin. It is not passing through 0, 0. Instead, it passes through the y-axis at 3. And this point is known as the y-intercept because it's where we are intersecting the y-axis. Okay, so let's look at two more non-proportional relationships. Um, this first one says Cheryl pays $10 to park at a fair and then $2 for each ride. Create a table to represent this situation. So if you notice, I'm going to have that $10 to park and then that $2 for each ride. So $2 is our rate and then that $10 is that extra thing. So before she has even gone on a ride, the cost is going to be $10 for that parking fee. She went on zero rides, so that would be two times zero plus 10. And two times zero plus 10 is $10. So then after one ride, I would do two times one for that one ride plus 10. Two times one is two plus 10 is $12. And then after two rides, I would do two times two plus 10 which would be four plus 10, so $14 for two rides. 
And then after three rides, I would do two times three, which is six plus 10 is 16. So the rate of change is two because that's what's changing each time we are adding by two to get the total cost. And then the Y intercept was that initial parking fee she paid of $10. So the equation is Y equals two X plus 10. And then it says, what makes this relationship non-proportional? So there's two things. First of all, we have an additive relationship. I am adding to get my Y value. I can't do X times something to get Y. So the relationship is additive instead of multiplicative. And the reason that it is additive instead of multiplicative was because there is that parking fee. There is no zero, zero point because we started at zero ten for that parking fee of $10. Okay, let's look at the next one. It says a German shepherd weighs three pounds at birth and gains two pounds each week. Create a graph to represent this situation. So at birth, when it's zero weeks old, it weighs three pounds. So I'm going to start on the y-axis at zero, three. And then after a week, it gains two pounds. So after one week, it would be two pounds more, which is five. And then after another week, it would be two pounds more, which is seven. After another week, it'd be two pounds more, which is nine. And this is a continual thing that's happening, so I'm going to connect the points. Okay, so the rate of change is what I was adding each time. And I was having to add two for that two pounds each week. That is what was repeating. That was what we were changing by each time. So that's our rate of change. And then the y-intercept I can see on the graph, it was three. I also know it's gonna be three because that was what we started with this time. It started with three pounds at birth. So that means the equation in y equals mx plus b form would be y equals two x plus three. And then it says, what makes this relationship non-proportional? The same two things as last time. There is a y-intercept, which we could clearly see on the graph. We're not starting at zero, zero. We were starting at zero, three because the German Shepherd weighed three pounds at birth. And then I didn't have a multiplicative relationship. I just added to each time or each week. So it was an additive instead of multiplicative relationship.